Do you know Christian witches exist? What is a Christian witch? What is going on? In order for you to understand the answer to that question, you probably will have to discard from your mind preconceived notions and beliefs that may be in error about religion, spirituality, Christianity, and witchcraft. I just go get a picture. I put of it. Witchcraft works. So let's look at the video together. Did you know that we used to summon spirits in this kingdom? You have a child, you have never summoned their spirits before. Well, so what have you been doing? Man, I'm not summoned spirits. No, 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 no. So you were not informed. You don't know about it. Okay, let me leave your children. You don't know we summon spirits of people. Oh, they make you believe it's only the witches and wizards that can summon. Let me tell you something. Anybody that gives you trouble, eh? I'm telling you what is proven and tested. Wake up in the middle of the night. That time their spirit is moving from one dream to another dream. Command their spirit to. No, please. No. Not in the kingdom of God. Okay, so now let's look at context, okay? So he's talking about summoning the human spirit. And then he's not talking about the spirit of the dead. But in this case now, he's talking about living. Someone who is living, but their spirit is being summoned. Like he was looking at the context of mothers summoning their children or whoever you want to summon. If you are disagreeing with what I'm saying, go back and listen to the clip again. Don't worry, you can see the title of the message right there on the screen. So I've sat down to watch the full video myself in context. Let's just listen to what he has to say. Not in the kingdom that Christ Jesus preached. We don't summon spirits in this kingdom. The only kingdom where spirits are being summoned is the kingdom of Satan, the kingdom of darkness. To summon human spirits, whether dead or alive, is to practice witchcraft. Spirits are summoned in witchcraft covens and not in the church, not in the assembly of God's people. Check your Bible. The only graphic description of summoning a spirit was at the request of King Saul. He wasn't doing so before. If anything, he had earlier banished witches and spiritists from the land. He did this summoning of the spirit of Samuel after God had departed from him. And when he was going to do so, he didn't call for a prophet of God. Neither did he call for a priest of God to do so. No, he knew that no sound-minded prophet or priest of God who was worth his salt would, would agree to do so. What did he do? He visited the witch of Endor, First Samuel chapter 28, verse 7. He knew it takes witchcraft to summon spirits. Servants of God don't summon spirits. Children of God won't do it either. Friends, please stay away from esoteric spiritual practices that have no solid footing in scriptures. Stop borrowing ideas from the occultic world. You have been translated from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of his dear son. Know where you belong. Stay warm, please. You are the light of the world. You are meant to show the way not to borrow ideas. When Paul preached in Ephesus and people came to know the Lord, the Bible says they burnt all their magical books worth 50,000 pieces of silver. Acts chapter 19 verse 19. Treasure books. That is an equivalent of 5.5 million dollars in today's money. That was what the believers of those days walked away from. Fortunately, believers of today are walking into it, all in the name of seeking anything that works. They are searching out the depths of Satan. Friends, please be on your guard against false teachings and false practices. Guard yourselves against seducing spirits that lead men away from Christ. In this kingdom, we don't do things because they are proven and tested. No, we don't. 
We don't do things because they work. Witchcraft works. <laughs> but we don't belong in that kingdom. We do things because they are approved of God. And friends, this really calls for a sober reflection. I believe that all pastors and teachers of the world, especially those who have ears of the people, ought to, ought to take a break from the pulpit periodically to re-examine themselves and their teachings and possibly make one or two corrections on their own. If need be, Paul wrote to Timothy, he said, take it unto yourself and to the doctrine, continuing them, for in doing this you will save both yourself and those who hear you. I hope this helps somebody to stay safe. It is a new day. I agree to a great extent with what he said. You see, he made some points. One is preachers who have people's ears. Whether you like it or not, you are watching this particular video because Jerese has been mentioned. Not because George is the one discussing it. I mean for most of you. Number two right there, witchcraft works. You see, the reason why Moses had banned any form of necromancy, any form of spiritism in the scripture, even Saul himself has to champion that. It wasn't because they were not working. They were working. Talking about the summer of spirit some people are in are in the argument if you are arguing if you are part of those who argue that it was not the spirit of someone that was summoned when the medium that was consulted had a situation tell me honestly in the comments that might warrant me making another video going deep into spiritism based on scriptural references normally you know me i don't normally do apologetics but i might do for this one pastors especially those that are quote and unquote social media popular of course it's really important important that sometimes as well you re-examine your teachings which of course i'm not saying that it's only your followers that believe that you can never be wrong if someone like joshua sermon would say things like this when it comes to summoning spirits let me give you some clear examples if you read somewhere in revelation where john's spirit was summoned i would put it that way and god was like come here and then he was seeing visions that is god and this is where you are talking about someone that is leaving but while the person is leaving the person is is able to see visions in another realm you have to understand that even though we have the physical realm things are happening interdimensional even in the spirit realm that our physical eyes cannot see think about what happened with the person of elisha in second kings chapter 6 somewhere down there 13 14 15 16 17 thereabout with respect to god opening the eyes of the servant of elijah to see what was happening the point i'm trying to make you understand is that even though there exist other realms that our physical eyes cannot really get to fathom summoning the spirit of the dead like you see in scripture is witchcraft but without diving deep into this because the essence of this video is not to going too deep of that conversation because right now someone will start talking about the transfiguration what happened jesus himself was trans transfigured in a state and the spirits of moses and elijah that appeared at the transfiguration were interacting with jesus not with the witnesses that were there who saw what happened think about that as well but already i can preempt some of the examples he would also give in scripture like what about raising the dead and all like i said i'm not getting into those conversations right now because that's not the intent but I want to play for you also another video that would give you an idea of what I see happening most especially in African Christianity. The battles that you need to defeat does not just require kneeling down, sitting down and speaking. It requires so many things and let nobody deceive you. You see this ritual is biblical. Whatever God is interested in, whatever he does, is what the enemy does in an opposite way. Moses performed the ritual. Elijah performed the ritual. When he went against the prophet of Baal, and the sacrifices they put, this one called the own power. Nothing happened. This other person called their own power and something happened. So ritual is biblical. Most times to kill your enemy and get rest, you need to do some ritual. Me, I'm a ritualist. Anyhow you want to think about it. Because if you try me, I will kill you. I would rather kill you than die. So I'm a ritualist. I would rather put an RIP for you than you put an RIP for me. No. Because the person that's sitting killing you has told us before. Is still the person that will go to show me and say, Thank you, Jesus. And you don't even understand why they are thanking Jesus. You are gone. 
Have you ever seen somebody do evil and go to social media and tell people, thank you, the devil? Nobody has to do anything to the enemy or to the devil. The good that people do, they say, thank you, Jesus. The bad that people do, they say, thank you, Jesus. So we don't even know, you know, everything Jesus, our Jesus has suffered. He takes the glory for the things he does and for the things he did not do. Hallelujah. So certain things in this life would require perform rituals if you must. As long as it's biblical, do it. As long as what it is biblical, perform that rituals. So many battles, we fight. You have to do something. If you have to go to your house, go behind the closet as God created you. Lift up your hands and cause seven things to to pass. Do it. If you have to carry a picture and put here and speak to it to change situations, do it. As long as you're not inviting the ones to do it. If you have to take your bare legs and put on the ground and speak to it, do it. If it has to change the situation. If somebody collects something precious to you, there's a ritual to get it back. I know a sister who said, Mama, they don't collect my husband though. They don't fit. That one time somebody tried to do something to me. My wife said, I bring to America. I just go get her picture. I put her inside her daughter. Put pepper, put salt. I was praying on top of it. Nobody tell her where she lived by her husband. I said, I said, you did it. How can I tell her? She didn't eat what? Because I told her, ah, what you did is not good though. If they collect the husband, that is the one that is not good. So there are certain things you can do to change situation. It doesn't matter how. Even the Bible said, what the Lord has joined together. Let no one put asunder. Hallelujah. Asunders are not celebrated. You don't celebrate somebody that is in asunder. So whatever you do to somebody that is putting asunder in your life and your happiness, however you do it, as long as it's biblical, it's okay. Hallelujah. So, my story, the what Amalekite then attacks those people from behind. That is a bad thing to do. And that is what God got really angry. That what we do, if they had said a bad soul drowned, normal, you fight, this person win. Okay. But for God to get involved and place a generational covenant on what they did is because it's bad. Hallelujah. So certain things, you have to do certain things to bring certain things to pass. Nobody should deceive you. However, you do things by being Kali. As long as you do not go against the word of God and it works, you call the name of Jesus and you did it. It is by Blika. It's a ritual. Yes, of course, there are demonic activities going on, whether you like it or not. But by your standing of who you are in Christ, there are certain kind of prayers probably you shouldn't be praying. But of course, African Christianity is way, 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 way quite unique compared to what Christianity itself should be and in our prayer style. What is a Christian witch? In order for you to understand the answer to that question, you probably will have to discard from your mind preconceived notions and beliefs that may be in error about religion, spirituality, Christianity and witchcraft. This is the preeminent issue why people cannot wrap their heads around <laughs> the possibility of a Christian witch simply because the mind has been filled with many religious beliefs and dogma and things that simply are not true. So the first thing to understand about being a Christian witch is that it is a spiritual path. And like all spiritual paths, it is deeply personal to the seeker. In the realm of the spirit, there is no vacuum. Sir, if you remove something, make sure you replace it with another thing. So listen to what Jesus did. So Jesus sends out these guys. Then Jesus brings in Peter, James, John. Do you understand? Sir, as you are chasing some things out, 
be replacing them. That's the way we function in the kingdom. What some of you did was that you chased some things out, but they did not have replacement. This is why the Bible says, if you chase out a spirit, it will start wandering. When it finishes, it says, let me go back and to see whether that place is still vacant. So people of God, there are people that genuinely chased out some things from their life. But unfortunately for them, they created vacancy for those things. So sir, when you are dealing with things, be replacing it. Be replacing it. Le Korosha, you chase away fear. Carry the word of God. Stuff it inside of your spirit. Keep Arasha. Whatever you chase out, you replace. Whatever you chase out, you replace. Whatever you chase out, you replace. Whatever you, if you remove your yeah, people from you, find so find people that, that have sense. Find people that speak faith inside of you. People of God, you must be very aware of it. Somebody help me shall fire. I want to if you want to walk in the realm of all around settlement make sure there's no vacuum anywhere there's no vacuum don't leave a vacuum anywhere don't leave any vacuum your problem is that you know some of you there's nothing wrong with your children there's nothing wrong with your children but if I might put it this, this way there's also nothing right with them did you just hear what I said there's nothing wrong with them but unfortunately, there is nothing right with them. So, sir, they are just vacant. So much vacuum in their life. And you are not feeling anything. You are not feeling anything. Where they are, some of them are not knowledgeable enough. Or they are too lazy to feel. Feel it! Don't you know that we used to summon spirits in this kingdom? You have a child. You have never summoned their spirits before. So what have you been doing? Ima and I are some on the spirit. No, 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 no. So you were not informed. You don't know about it. Okay, let me leave your children. You don't know we summon spirits of people. Oh, they made you believe it's only the witches and wizards that can summon. Let me tell you something. Anybody that gives you trouble. Eh? I'm telling you what is proven and tested. Where is it being tested and proven? In scripture, as an example, except Pastor Jerry Eze himself is someone that has been doing this. So, does he do this? Just like when he received the sword from um, Bishop Duncan Williams, it has raised different controversies here and there. People can do things and do it in the name of God. So far as he's branded with, in the name of Jesus. <laughs> yes, of course. It will now become like a practice. But like he said, this is not what he came to come and teach them. He's, he, that means he's an expert in summoning people's spirits. So maybe now that I'm talking, who knows? Maybe Jerezel will see my video. And he will go and start looking for how to summon my spirit so that <laughs> I will stop talking about him or something. Probably. <laughs> so before you hate me and call me names, don't worry. Just send the video to Jerieze <laughs> to come and call my spirit. Eh? So that he will summon my spirit and then read to me the ordinances. Anyway, either this one is just, either it is for him to just sound deep. Note, either this is for him to just sound deep in his conversation or he is actually trying to invite ways of doing things do you understand and of course it is plain witchcraft like you heard the brother say as well because in the kingdom of god there are standards i'm not i'm not i'm not wake up in the middle of the night that time their spirit is moving from one dream to another dream command their spirit to show up when you summon their spirit, read for them ordinances of the kingdom. And tell them if you don't obey, this is what is going to happen. You don't know how to summon spirits. It's not what I came to do. But sir, keep alashida. Lebea, until you address some people's spirits, their bodies will not align. This is the thing. You can pray for people. That you are praying for someone. And bringing them to God, like I would say, oh, intercede for me, pray for me. You'll come and say, Father, I'm praying for George, that you should bless him, 
Father, I pray that you should give him more wisdom and all that. You are not literally summoning my spirit. You are talking to God about bringing my... It's just like intercession. You are interceding. When you are interceding for someone, you are not summoning the person's spirit. You are not bringing the... You are not... You see the way he spoke about it literally. You summon the person's spirit and then you speak. That means you, you, are, you are talking to the person. You are being godic if i'm to put it that way in talking to the person that you are speaking god's word over the person where's example of that in scripture if we if, we, if it's tested and proven and these are all the things i see here on social media of uh, apostles and pastors trying to sound deep but again you look at what they're saying it has no scriptural connotation let me let me leave that one there because sometimes you are busy talking to people's body and other parents every day you are addressing the bodies of your children you know this thing you're doing is not good you know this thing is not good. they don't hear they are not hearing so sir is a spirit thing you summon their spirit where it matters he said to jeremiah before i formed thee i knew thee go back to how that child was formed where divinity knows people without human body And begin to reel out because if he knew thee before he formed thee i would take back the battle that's where let's go back to where it all started from but you are dressing from now to there instead of you going from there to here it's from there we begin we begin from there to here but you yourself you are beginning from here to there the thing is that it is god that knew us before we were born is god that knows you are not god you see even though the scripture some people have taken this whole idea of ye are god and then misinterpreted the whole thing you are not god you can't be god god can give you the privilege of providence that you are able to you know give you gifts and then unlock like just like last time someone was saying you can't um i am more gifted than god conversation i think we talked about it last time you are not god i think you have to ring that into your head all of you that were shouting yeah 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 deep deep you, you don't even want to have understanding and these are things that make when people come and start speaking again so would i say giving rebuttals on this you say oh division in the body of christ this and this and this but these are videos you put out there yourself even the soundtrack that was put there by the channel i saw it on was like giving these vibes of like you know roco <laughs> vibes i would say if you look at what she's saying here about assignment and about using people's pictures and all that this is how far christianity itself has gotten to and she kept saying that so far as it is biblical do it if you look at it, the Bible as well, let's say for this whole idea of summoning of spirits, it's happened in the Bible. You can see where that particular idea of that is coming from, going through mediums. Would you say that because you are seeing that happen in the Bible, because it's written in the Bible, you have to wake up tomorrow, go consult a medium because you want to speak with the spirit of the dead? spirit and then if someone is troubling you you go and for you to even for him to even say someone is troubling you that means you have identified that this person is troubling me so what do you do at night when you are praying you are calling that particular person's name you believe is troubling you or doing something to you and you want to, you are summoning the person's spirit it's not just you about it's not it's no more about summoning the spirit of the dead for someone that is living there's a god factor when it comes to this particular summoning of spirit i've not seen a, a, a place in scripture where the the spirit of a person who is living is being summoned except for god himself doing that by providence for you to see or would i say for you to see in the realms for which he is what the man himself said about borrowing ideas from the occultic work and all that is actually very very true 
the occult is real sometimes when i try to talk about the occultic world people are like oh my god i'm like would people really und- would people understand these things if i start talking about them but again if i want to talk about these things i would open the bible and show you kuru kuru so that you can see but i try to avoid these conversations so what i want you to take out from learning watching this video is that what jerry Eze himself said about summoning spirits it is not in the order of how the kingdom itself should work you can pray to god about situations god can open your eyes of understanding to see things that are happening in the spirit but when it comes to you acting like a medium to someone someone either the spirit of the dead or the spirit of the living for whatever occasion it is that in itself is witchcraft and witchcraft is not that which happens in the kingdom of God. I hope we understand this conversation. But of course, you can say what you think in the comments. If you want me to make another video looking at this subject much deeper, of course, I wouldn't have to mention anyone's name in the conversation. It would just be me sitting down and then breaking things down for you with scriptures. And then we can always get to just oppose. Probably I might get to do that.